In John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Welcome to worship this morning at Faith Lutheran on this Mother's Day weekend. Way, way back, maybe in the 100s or the 200s, the earliest depiction of Jesus that, was, that has been found in a church was of Jesus as depicted as the Good Shepherd. And I think that's because of all the Psalms, Christians love that one maybe the most, but it also reminded them of the whole life and connection with their baptism. The green pastures they saw as the time of preparation for baptism. The still waters are the font. The soul restored is the gift of the Holy Spirit that comes in baptism. The right pathways are the journeys that the Good Shepherd guides us on. The rod and staff are the way that God guides and directs our ways. The table, of course, is Holy Communion with a cup that overflows with mercy. And the house of the Lord is the community of the church in which we enjoy God's goodness. So welcome to Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, before we go further, we're going to take some time to um, collect a noisy offering. And if you don't know what that is, you'll find out in a minute. <clears throat> Speaking of noise, when somebody wraps one of the quilts that is made in that room behind us on Monday mornings, it doesn't make any sound. The person who wraps themselves in that quilt might go, ah, that feels so good to be warm. Uh, in that room, however, there are some pleasant sounds that are being made each week, the sound of sewing machines and the sounds of good conversation. Uh, today, we're going to make a different kind of noise, <clears throat> the kind of noise that's made by a handful of coins hitting the bottom, bottom of a tin, there we go, sound effects, of that tin pail. So everything you dump in there today as the ushers start to come forward is going to be used for the quilters to uh, repair sewing machines, replenish thread and batting and the like. And I think since this may have caught some people by surprise, we're going to repeat this next week just to make sure the bucket gets a little fuller. So ushers, on your way with this noisy offering. Let's make some noise. <laughs> Uh, yes, and also the, 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 the soft sound of $20 bills is also acceptable. <laughs> or a 50, whatever.
of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, God gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on us the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand for our gathering hymn. <laughs>
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. The gift of new life, of eternal life, is the gift of the risen Christ. It is the promise of Jesus. It was true for Dorcas in Joppa. It was true for those who have come out of the great ordeal in Revelation's vision. It is true for us and for all the baptized. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading of, is from Acts chapter 9. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek for Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A little something different for the psalm today. You'll sing the refrain. I'll sing the verses. shepherd I shall not be in want the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters Savior like a shepherd lead us march we need your tender care You restore my soul, O oh Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need your tender care. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, march we. Your tender care. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The work that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, 
and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. You may be seated. A moment for centering your hearts comes to you from second chapter of Galatians. St. Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I have always enjoyed it when late night TV hosts take a microphone and a camera and go out on the street and start interviewing people. Long time ago, Steve Allen used to do this, David Letterman used to do this, Jimmy Kimmel still does this. And if I had a camera and a microphone, I'd go out maybe on some street in Saginaw and ask people, what kind of life would you like? What kind of life would you like? I would expect to hear all kinds of answers. I want a happy life. I want a satisfied life, I want a long life, I want an exciting life, I want life lived on the edge, I want a quiet life, I want a daring life. Maybe some would say I want a single life, others would say I want a married life. Maybe somebody would say I like to live in a solitary way, or others I have to live in community. I want a life lived with integrity, I want a life lived with few or no regrets. I don't know about you, but personally, I could vote yes for just about any of those on that list, especially long life. When they carve my tombstone, on the left, it's going to say 1952. On the right, I want it to say 2052. I want to live to be 100. I want to live to be 100. But even at 100 years old, I fall way, 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 way short of a lot of the people that are named in the early part of the Bible. I have known people of a variety of ages who have made the commitment to read the Bible all the way through from cover to cover and have gotten started. And they read Genesis 1 and they go, I know that story, it's awesome, the creation story. They read Genesis 2, I can do this. The other creation story, Adam and Eve are on the scene. I get to Genesis 3, the fall and Adam and Eve and the fruit and the serpent and all that. And Genesis 4, they get kicked out of the garden but life starts over. And then they get to Genesis 5. And speaking of tombstones, Genesis 5 is the graveyard for a lot of those well-intentioned efforts. I'm going to read you just a little bit of Genesis 5. Bear with me. When Seth had lived 105 years, he became the father of Enosh. Seth lived after the birth of Enosh 807 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he became the father of Kenan. Enosh lived after the birth of Kenan 815 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. When Kenan had lived 70 years, he became the father of Mahalalel. Kenan lived after the birth of Mahalalel 840 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Kenan were 910 years, and he died. And when Mahalalel had lived 65 years, he became the father of Jared. Mahalalel lived after the birth of Jared 830 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years and he died and I can't take it anymore. I'm done. And I've only got 16 verses into that chapter and I'm over. And I get it. If that's happened to you, I totally get it. But let me go back just to two of those verses for a minute. When Seth had lived 105 years, he became the father of Enosh. Seth lived after the birth of Enosh 807 years. Time for an occasional Hebrew lesson. The Hebrew word for lived is hayah. And the Hebrew word for life is chaim. It's one of those back of your throat kind of words. Chaim. And if that word starts to jingle a little bit in your head about a song on a Broadway show, uh, maybe it will remind you of this one from Fiddler on the Roof. 
Lechaim, Lechaim, Tonight. Is to the father I'll try to be. Here's to my bride to be. Bring the chaim to life, to life. The chaim, the chaim, the chaim to life. Life has a way of confusing us, blessing and bruising us. Bring the chaim to life. If Seth or any of the other names that appear in that long genealogy in Genesis chapter 5 lived really lived with the same gusto that Tevye and Lazar sing in that scene from Fiddler on the Roof, I have a feeling that the dash on their tombstones was long and fat and very rich. And maybe the lifespan of those characters in Genesis 5 is so long because they knew something about living that we either don't know, we have forgotten, or we've chosen to ignore. I want to believe that Seth and all the other residents of Genesis chapter 5 were not living like prisoners in a cell, counting the days, counting the days, asking for another piece of chalk when it ran out. Um, I want to believe they never wondered once why they had lived so long, and they never ever asked God, why haven't you taken me home by now? I want to believe that they woke up every single day with the expectation that God was going to show them something new or exciting or somehow in the midst of all the bruising and confusing that life can deliver, there was waiting some kind of a blessing to be experienced, some kind of a, a new gift that God was going to deliver waiting to be opened. I want to believe I, that you never ever heard a single one of those people say, now I've seen everything, because they knew they would never, even at 800 years, have seen everything that God could possibly unleash on their life. Because if God is in the business of handing out life, there's always possibilities for new things to appear. Always the possibility of something new to be discovered. And I want to believe that Methuselah, who is reported to have lived 969 years, when his last day came and he was ready to die, he said, already? Perhaps they had discovered something that Jesus was trying to get us to rediscover. To be in Christ is to be connected to the God who is the one who gives eternal life. The one who gives abundance. The one who provides overflowing to be in Christ is to be connected to the God who takes your cup, whether it's empty or already full, and fills it to overflowing. The phrase that we use so often in church, eternal life, think of that as the overflowing word from the 23rd Psalm. Now, if back to that man on the street idea of interviewing people. If Jesus had heard that whole list of possibilities, I think he would have said, cool, to all of them. All of them. If your life begins to fill up with those kind of things, I think Jesus would say, that's just great. But when Jesus says he has come to give us eternal life, he's talking about that which, however full or empty your glass might be, when he is present, his presence causes that cup to overflow. You may have riches, and that is wonderful. But if you also consider God to be the place where you find sanctuary, then your cup overflows. You may feel good this morning, and I hope you all do. That's good. That's great. That's wonderful. But when you also know that God's primary business is forgiveness, then your cup overflows. You may feel like life is moving along on a good path for you. Maybe it's got ups and downs and twists and turns, but still, it's a good path. When you also listen to the Good Shepherd, you've made a connection, an intimate connection with the awesome God of life, and you realize as you journey, you are already living part of your eternal life now. And even if by our standards, a person's cup is totally empty and dry as can be, that cup can overflow in amazing ways. Back in 2010, I went with our church group, uh, which had done this a number of times, down to Tijuana, Mexico to build a house. Who's been to Tijuana? 
Yesterday it was nobody. Um, if you've been there, you know what an interesting place it is. Um, we went down there to build a house for this young couple who was in the middle of that picture and their young child. Um, their cup, you have to say, was pretty empty by our standards. Um, I don't know where they lived before they got this house, maybe with his parents, maybe with hers, or maybe if you've been to Tijuana, you've seen what people live in. Houses built out of discarded tires, houses built out of leftover sheet metal and cardboard and scrap wood, amazingly and terrible. But the home that we built, the, the home, the house, was built on a concrete slab, 12 by 12. Inside, the studs were bare. Outside, it was covered with OSB. That was painted. Had one door, one window, no electricity, no water, no running water. And for this couple, that was such an upgrade that their cup overflowed. And when we handed them the keys and we took time to have a house blessing and shared Holy Communion with them, I think not only did their cup overflow, but so did ours. That was a little taste for all of us of eternal life. L'chaim, to life. Uh, some of you may have worked in this county with Habitat for Humanity. The same sort of thing happens. When the keys are handed over to, uh, to someone and that house is now on its way to becoming their home, more cups overflow. L'chaim, to life. And in so many different ways, you can hand the keys to an overflowing life to another person through a simple act of kindness, to taking some time to listen, and in so many other ways, you can celebrate life. Shall we pray? Holy God, by your power at work within us, we are able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ever ask or imagine. So to you be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our next hymn.
we join our voices confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. Set free from captivity to sin and death. We pray to God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous and unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open to us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy. Prayer. Seek out those who weep, who weep, while they await consolation of healing, especially those hospitalized or recovering at home, including Gigi Weiss, Michael Mercy, Sonny Fagan, Glenn Duffett, Dale Spar, John Clemens, Bonnie Liner, Herb Schmidt, Tim Dean, Kathy Dean, Mickey Coyer, Jerry Bates. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold in us the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. This time I'll ask the ushers to bring forward the offering as we sing the offering hymn.
living God. You gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, God of wisdom and thanksgiving, and blessed is Jesus Christ, the Lamb become shepherd. When we fear, he comes to anoint us with hope. When our hearts are empty, he fills them with your love. When the world mocks us, he comforts us with your grace. When sin and death pretend to be our only companions, he sends goodness and mercy to be our lifelong friend. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for them to drink and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. You have prepared this table for us, so now anoint the meal with your spirit, as well as those gathered in this place. We are fed the bread in its brokenness, so we might go to restore fractured relationships with those we do not like, to comfort the grieving with your love and hope. Through the cup, your grace overflows into us so that we will anoint the lost and lonely with your goodness and mercy, so that we will lead the oppressed out of the valleys of injustice. And when you lead us into your house at the end of all time, we will join our sisters and brothers around the table prepared for us, worshiping and praising you day and night. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and all glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are thirsty, all who are hungry. Come.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us, Send us from, from the table, table as witnesses, witnesses to, to the, the resurrection, resurrection that, that through our lives we all may, may know life in, in Jesus', Jesus Christ. Name. Amen. Amen. A few announcements to send you into this new week with. First of all, um, without going into the whole long story, you may know that the former food pantry that used to be at St. John Lutheran was shut down. That's a whole long story. Surprisingly, it's being reopened in conjunction with a community center being sponsored by Ascension St. Mary's Hospital. Um, they're going to be unloading, uh, loading all the shelves this coming Wednesday at 7.30. So if you've got a mind to add some body to some efforts to stock the shelves, um, check last this week's emails for the open house that's going to happen soon. But this is uh, one time only, 7.30 this Wednesday, to restock the shelves there. We continue our study uh, called Hot Topics uh, this Wednesday at 11. We are currently looking at, we're actually looking at two things. We're looking at critical race theory and how it's taught in places like law school. That's one thing. And we're looking also at how racism is dealt with in schools. That's another different thing. I won't give you the whole lecture now. Come on Wednesday. Looking ahead to later this month, we're going to celebrate Ascension Day, a Thursday at 6 o'clock out on the pavilion, wherever it is, I can never get my bearings straight around here. Bring your own picnic dinner, whatever you like, either a sandwich or a seven course meal in a basket. And we'll have a simple service to celebrate Christ's ascension and we'll send up kites as a, as a symbol of that. If you don't have a kite of your own, we'll try to have some for you. Remember, the last Saturday of this month, there's one service that weekend. That that uh, affects all of you. <laughs> Saturday the 28th at 5 o'clock. Wear your name tag. Because there may be people at Saturday who don't know who you are and think you're visitors. So wear your name tag. I told them the same thing. And we'll do this again on Sunday of 4th of July weekend and on Saturday again Labor Day weekend. So it's an experiment. So be here on Saturday that one time. Finally, in honor of Mother's Day, um, we're going to pray again. Gracious God, on this day that has been set aside to honor mothers, by the power of your spirit, unite our hearts with those who look at the word mother from many different perspectives and many varied experiences. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or a child running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointment, we walk with you and ask you to forgive us when we say foolish things. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate that with you. And to those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we lament that with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge that experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having had you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not yet turned out the way you long for it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you on this complex path. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. 
to those who placed children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and know you will always hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you, and we give thanks to God for you. Amen. Please stand for the blessing and our sending hymn. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.